Archie's TV Live Bout Issue 6, The Matchmaker. At first, it's pretty hard to get invested in the story because Hilda's face is portrayed as stunningly ugly, which is an uncanny valley because her hair is orange like it's supposed to be. She says Harvey's ugly and asks Sabrina why she doesn't date someone ugly instead, since she's a witch. Sabrina says Harvey is cute and runs off because he'll be here any minute. Hilda thinks that Grotesque would never be interested in someone looking like Sabrina anyways. She thinks that it's impressive that Grotesque can turn himself into a bat, which is a heartwarmingly nice way of looking at a vampire, and opens the door for Harvey and he falls into the house. Harvey offers to straighten this rug, and says he wasn't watching where he was going. Hilda thinks that with all of his faults, she can't imagine why Sabrina would feel anything for Harvey other than pity. Then she comes to the conclusion that she feels sorry for him because he can't get any dates. She sees Betty and Veronica, and when she asks Harvey if he ever thought of dating other girls besides Sabrina, he refuses. A contrast from the 70s comic where he cheated on her a lot. But of course he lied to her aunt. He says Betty and Veronica only want to go out with Archie. So Hilda uses magic to make them fall in love with Harvey, and he doesn't look very happy when they start fighting over him with Betty lampshading that Veronica has Archie most of the time. Sabrina sees what's going on, drawn the way she was in that story called The Court Jester, which takes a little getting used to. Unfortunately, Harvey becomes flattered and arrogant, and says that he can only go out with one at a time. At least it's more interesting than him being perfect and bland. Hilda tells Sabrina that she won't have any more need for Harvey now that her ugly friends are chasing him. I guess she's hoping Sabrina won't figure out that she cast a spell on them to make it this way. Of course, she does figure it out, and brings them back to normal. They think they must have been daydreaming because they showed up here on their way to Pop Tates, and Harvey tells them that maybe they can work something out, being desperate. Sabrina's not mad at Harvey at the end, and just comforts him as the story ends, because she's that attached to him. In the next story, Sabrina's asked by a kid if she's really a witch, and she says she has powers that puzzle most people, and magically creates a pink dress. I guess she thinks it's okay to reveal magic to kids because they definitely won't be believed, and when they look back on it, they'll just convince themselves they're just making it up. They're impressed instead of scared, which is nice. And the kid says that the only magic he can do is the disappearing penny trick where you snap your fingers and it falls into your sleeve. The little girl says that any little kid could do that. Then the story ends with Sabrina telling Hilda that the penny vanished, and she asks Sabrina if she's sure that he didn't whisper any magic words. As if magic words are always needed for magic. And she's snapping her fingers, and her coin just falls to the floor. In the next story, Harvey shows up in his car and asks for Sabrina, and this distraction causes Hilda to cut her prize rose by accident. He tells her to be more careful. She could just magically reverse what happened. He calls out for Sabrina again, and she complains that he's trying to puncture her eardrums. He apologizes, and she says maybe he'll realize this and cast a spell, which he doesn't react to. And he also doesn't react to her suddenly going quiet either after she said he'll realize this. She casts a spell to send out a jolt and knock him down, and the lightning beam hits the door he opened and somehow reflects it back at her even though it hit the door, not a mirrored surface on it. She's magically unharmed looking after that, and walks into the house to yell at him, and slips on something. Harvey at least helps her up and apologizes. He says he was just showing Sabrina the new top he bought for his nephew to test it out. She throws it and says that if it bounces back, that means it's good, and it's amusing that Harvey says, what a strange way to test the top! It hits her, Sabrina asks if she's alright. Hilda asks what happened, because everything went black, and asks if they had an eclipse, because she's dazed. Harvey tells her what really happened, and Sabrina advises them to go home. He says he wants to get the string for his top first. He trips her by accident because he didn't know she was standing on it, and apologizes. He ends the story by going into the car, and Hilda tells Sabrina to tell her the next time he's coming over so she can get out of town. And Sabrina just thinks she's overreacting for some reason. It'd be nice to revert to humor, surprisingly to me, right after this story came out. The first issue of Sabrina's own comic came out, and yet she still had a bunch of stories in Archie's TV laugh out, when most of his issues aren't even on the site for me. The first story was really easy to come up with, 
Hilda makes Betty and Veronica fall in love with Harvey to try to get him away from Sabrina. And Sabrina figures it out immediately. And it was unfaithful of Harvey to even consider it. Then Sabrina is impressed by a magic trick that a little kid does. And then Hilda is tormented by Harvey's clumsiness. Archie's TV Laugh Out Issue 7 Someone reluctantly tells Sabrina's friends that they won't be allowed to use the park for the rock festival tomorrow. Which was a last minute decision. Because a group of women in town were protesting the whole idea. The Women's Music, Culture, and Bird Watchers Society. One of the soccer moms shows up, coincidentally, and says she's glad he told them this, and it's almost election time. She's the president of the group, and says that the rock music would frighten the birds away. And she somehow thinks rock music is horrible because the comic is dated. I like that Reggie says that she's one bird that he'd love to frighten away. I guess he was too quiet for her to hear him. She doesn't want to let unsupervised teenagers run wild in the park, calling them kids even though they're teenagers. She's definitely a straw man. Archie says there isn't enough time left to tell people that the festival is called off. The ugly character continues to be unlikable, calling it a childish, rowdy get-together. The mayor somehow thinks that she'll agree to her group supervising the teenagers. She doesn't want to be seen with a bunch of happy kids. But surprisingly, she says that the mayor left her with very little choice, when before, she had the authority to make him cancel a festival. She says that the festival will have to be done her way. Then we see the Archie gang tell Sabrina what happened. And since it was all summed up in a few panels, it makes me wish the beginning wasn't dragged down with that boring scene full of talking where Sabrina wasn't in it, and she wasn't in the title either. Archie says that the soccer mom group plays a couple of highbrow recitals. And surprisingly, they're portrayed as having a bit of a point when Jughead complains that everyone has to take a bath and comb their hair. While her friends were worried about losing all of their fans, Sabrina reassures them and goes to the festival, where the ugly lady says that she wants them to turn their amplifiers down to avoid frightening the birds. And Archie asks how they'll hear them way out there. Jughead complains that the woman must have had a terrible upbringing, and she wants to start the festival by showing the audience what good music sounds like. Reggie says she's mean and some guy sings badly. So Sabrina uses magic to make the bad guys get attacked by birds and chased away. A teenager says that's the coolest act yet, talking too much slang. The bad guys jump into the water and Sabrina casts a spell to brainwash the soccer moms into talking in heavy slang and being in favor of the Archies. And then the old ladies play music and sing, which they'd be embarrassed to remember if they could later on. I guess it's not completely obvious that's magic. People could assume that the women realized they were the bad guys because they love birds, but the birds chased them away. So they changed their minds. Someone wants to take a picture of this, and after the festival ends, Sabrina decides to bring the old girls back to their senses, even though they'd be humiliated at being told how they acted last time, and they're not nice people normally. The story ends with the woman wanting to leave town with her group the next time any kids want to have a festival, and the other woman suggests leaving today. In the next story, it goes way too long without Sabrina getting to say anything. So I honestly find it too boring to talk about until that point. There's really nothing to comment on. After an eternity, Archie tells Sabrina that the instruments of the Archies and Pussycats were sabotaged. So they need someone to play for the crowd until they could get new instruments so that the day would be saved. See, why couldn't the story have started here? Nobody needed to read a huge amount of pages where the two groups discovered what happened to their instruments. Sabrina says that Harvey's here and conveniently has a harmonica. The same guy that had bumped into Jughead earlier steals his harmonica, gets in the car and drives away. I guess he really doesn't like the music that the two bands play, or their fans. Archie says they'll never catch up to him and thinks he'll have to refund the audience. Sabrina uses magic so that the bad guy's car flies back to them. Reggie grabs them, and his beard falls off, and he says he didn't mean any harm and was just trying to do his thing for their town. He did this because he hates noise pollution. I feel like it's unrealistic that someone would go to this length just because he hates rock music. Why take the risk of getting in trouble? But criminals do exist. The bands go on to play, and the story ends with someone saying that the bad guy got a job selling earmuffs. Both of these stories were about rock music and Archie having a band. 
It's just a huge amount of padding. Archie's TV laugh out issue 8. We see people at a charity bazaar, where Veronica and Betty are selling desserts. Nobody's buying Veronica's cakes, and she says she won't make a nickel for the orphanage. It's a pleasant surprise that even Veronica cares enough to do this. She realizes she's a bad cook, and a bunch of time is wasted with her whining. Sabrina says she doesn't eat sweets because it's bad for her complexion. This entire conflict could have been avoided if she just took cooking classes. But I guess we're supposed to assume that she did, and she's just unteachable. Or she's too stubborn to take them. She says that maybe they're saving her cakes for last, and wonders if a miracle could be arranged. Reggie makes fun of Veronica's cooking, and it turns out she heard that and starts crying. Too much time was wasted until finally Sabrina casts a spell to make people think that her cakes were delicious and not find it suspicious at all. So they eat the hard, burnt cakes and pies, and because they're still commenting on what makes them bad, Veronica asks if they really like them or not. Sabrina's actions really had consequences, because Jughead broke his tooth on a cookie. Veronica's all sold out and decides to bake more, and the story ends with the guys being sick. You know, I thought Sabrina was going to use magic to make her cakes actually good. If she could include make nobody suspicious as a part of her spell, then there was nothing stopping her from making her cakes good, as well as brainwashing them into eating it. But instead her actions had consequences. Maybe she can cast a spell on them to make them not sick anymore and fix Jughead's broken tooth and erase their memories of what happened.